Hi, everybody. How's everyone doing? <laughs> uh, so let's, I guess, I, I, I need a stretch for sure. It's, uh, okay, because I'm about to drop some science up in here. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I just want to thank everyone again for coming out. Um, this is a very, very large crowd. <laughs> I was not expecting this. Um, and uh, just to uh, reiterate what Julia said, I'm um, one of the early designers at Oculus back in the very um, early development kit days. And back when VR was just not really a thing at all. Um, and the only reason why I say this is because it's pretty much the premise to the things that I've learned and, and sharing in this presentation itself. And um, what I really wanted to talk about is something that I'm not hearing very often from uh, designers in the VR space, and that's to design, but with a strong emphasis on the science aspect. So let's get right into it. Um, I'm sure all of you are asking is like, what does science have to do with design? Um, well. To better answer this question, I wanted to give an example of how I came to the, this conclusion myself. Okay. So uh, back around four years ago, uh, when I first joined Oculus, we were given a large task to figure out how to build a virtual platform for uh, VR. And as a novice myself, <laughs> the first thing I did was to see if there was any resources to learn from. And then I realized there was pretty much nothing. Um, it was just a bunch of studies back in the 70s with antiquated uh, technologies and um, a lot of weird images of like weird goggles and stuff on people's faces. Um, so, <laughs> so I had this dilemma of trying to design a platform for VR, but didn't have anything to guide me. Like, Nowadays, you see like skeuomorphic, flat, mobile, web, stereoscopic design, so many dire different directions that in VR was technically all feasible. So I couldn't find the underlying thread that sort of made sense of it all. It wasn't until I met these individuals, and just to name drop them, is uh, Richard Yao, who's our perceptual psychologist, and who I personally want to thank so much because he checked my science in this and was very helpful. And Tom Heath, who's our senior software engineer, and he um, did a lot of the early prototypes to prove out a lot of Richard's concepts and theories back in the day. And it wasn't until I met these individuals that I started to understand why, um, what I've been sort of missing uh, um, in designing for VR. So it's easy to have a preconceived notion to, um, to VR as being this magical wonderland with no references, guidelines, rules, because science fiction has sort of taught us this. Um, you can make up your own physics, you can have interfaces coming out of your bodies, um, you can make the world bend to your will, technically. And so, however, if you really think about it, um, even if you're designing a different reality, you're still guided by the rules set, set within your own current reality. You see, unlike most mediums, VR enables a person to feel a phenomenon called presence, just like how Krishna said. And with presence comes believability. And when your body and mind believes the things you're experiencing are real, well, so does everything else. We as human beings physically and psychologically expect things like gravity, velocity, inertia, speed. Our bodies literally have organs just to feel these minute differences. We have instincts to tell us to duck in present danger. Our knees get weak when we experience vertigo. We um, get nausea when we experience constant back and forth motion. Um, we have mental model constructs of our environment and for the purposes that they serve. We literally walk every day abiding by cultural and social norms that is developed through years of observation and learning. So we are a culmination of biology, psychology, and sociology intertwined in this existence called reality. All these things don't simply go away when you're in VR, and it, simply, and it definitely doesn't go away when you're designing for VR. To the contrary, as designers, it does the quite the opposite. It makes you realize even more that how our current reality is the foundation to creating a new one. How designing for virtuality is simply designing for our current reality. 
we as designers like to say we're crafting experiences. But in VR, this is actually quite literal. The experience is no longer what's in front of you, but what's around you and also what's part of you. Combine that with presence and you have the opportunity to create something immersive that defies expectations. However, if you break those expectations, especially when it comes to our brains and the signals that are re uh, received from the rest of our bodies, then your immersive experience will no longer be different and uh, uh, it will join the rest of the thousands of experience that's currently plaguing the VR industry like this. Um, this is very bad for VR. This is not something we want to see. Um, this leads to my very first important lesson that I've learned is that conflict causes chaos. Um, this alien looking structure is our vestibular system. It's an organ within our inner ear that provides awareness of body balance and movement. It's one of the many organs in our bodies that tells our brains what's going on. Usually our vestibular system works in tandem with our vision to orient a person in real life, but however, in VR, this isn't always the case. Your vision may say you're running up a bridge, whereas your uh, vestibular organ is saying you're sitting down eating um, potato chips in your couch. So this type of physical and mental conflict can cause discomfort. So what do you do in cases like this? We can't expect people to be running around in giant open spaces, right? Clearly, being able to roam around or fly in a spaceship in a spatial environment is one of the magical aspects of VR. But these experiences will never 100% match what you're currently doing at all times. Especially if you're trying to do them in your mini studio apartment in San Francisco, and you're exactly right. So there are different techniques that, like teleportation that has been developed to interpret movement instead of walking in a linear motion. Teleportation has been shown to mitigate locomotion discomfort by a considerable amount and has been used in a lot of games already. Like this example is a uh, Robo Recall. We actually use a version of teleportation for spaces where the environment activates while the user stays stationary. However, we also use teleport um, whenever you're going in and out of your friend's rooms and whenever you want to change seating positions orienting around a table. But the question here is, why is this type of motion OK? Why does this motion not make you feel uncomfortable just like every other type of motion? Well, this actually leads up to my second important lesson is that perception is interpretation. This is basically a fancy way of saying that everything we see is very subjective. The image below is a famous drawing called Shepherd's Table, and is an example of how we interpret things differently, even from basic geometric shapes. Uh, just for as an indicator, these two tables are exactly the same um, uh, uh, size and shape. It's just oriented differently. So to answer my question earlier of like, why is this type of motion okay? You, we need to understand how our brain interprets uh, motion and trajectory. Remember when I said that perception is interpretation? Look at these yellow balls on the screen. Um, I'm sure all of you are seeing that it's moving in a counterclockwise motion, right? However, I forgot to mention that nothing's actually moving. It's simply one ball is at full transparency at different rates of time. Um, you see, there's a term called phi phenomenon, where one sees an optical illusion of perceiving continuous motion, even though there's no movement. So teleportation essentially uses this illusion by simply making you think that these two appearances of I am here and I am here are related, even though technically they're not. Um, you can think of teleportation almost as a static movement. Um, all the information, a trajectory, um, and motion is lost in between these two points. So your brain is missing all the information of inertia, velocity, and speed. So this in turn negates any sense of motion trajectory the person feels, thus it mitigates discomfort even though you feel like you just moved. Um, not to say that teleportation is the ultimate solution because it does cause a lot of cognitive load um, for the user, especially if it's done out of context. And however, this is a good example of how interpreting motion is subjective even though it's still perceived as motion. Well. Teleportation is freaking cool and all, but 
What about experiences that actually has continuous motion? Does this mean that VR is incapable of providing such experiences that are comfortable? Well, of course not. However, your brain will need a helping hand to do so. This is a good segue into my third important lesson that we can encourage interpretation. Remember, interpretation is subjective. Um, thus, it can be guided by us as designers to reinforce foundations and stability that the brain needs to remain comfortable. There's a term called optic flow, which by definition, this is gonna be a little bit technical, the pattern of apparent motion of objects, surfaces, and edges in a visual scene caused by relative motion between an observer and a scene. This is, again, a really fancy way of saying there's enough visual information shown to a person to make them believe that they're moving in relative, um, in, in moving relative to their space. Uh, so managing this optic flow and the amount of information that the user is exposed to is crucial in creating a comfortable experience, especially if there's continuous motion. But what do I mean by information, right? Our senses, especially our eyes, are always processing the world around us. When you're driving down the highway, for example, your vestibular system is telling, that, telling your brain that you're accelerating. Your eyes can see that the road is flying underneath you and your peripheral vision is detecting movement of nearby cars and scenery passing by you. So this is the information that we're constantly viewing. However, this is not necessarily a good thing. Um, anyone who tried a roller coaster in VR can tell you that. Motion, especially continuous motion, where the user is moving relative to the environment, will immediately make most people feel discomfort. Even if the person is not technically moving, if you lack information, like having an ambiguous background while it, motion is still being exerted, the user will still interpret this type of motion as self-motion. The trick here is to make the person feel as stationary as possible. That's not, that it's not you that's moving, but it's the object in the environment that's moving around you. This is why managing optic flow and the foundations and, and um, providing foundation of fixed points for references, AKA information, are so vital. To create foundations, we just need to provide enough information to our brains to convince a person that they are stationary. In this first example, it's kind of difficult to tell who's moving in relationship to each other. However, if you add a uh, background, some nice wooden floors and some pretty plants for stationary fixed points for references, then all of a sudden it becomes super obvious that it's not the user that's moving, but the uh, object itself. These are the types of encouragements we as designers can construct for, the user, um, for our users to experience the world in very specific ways. So, but what about that sweet spaceship I showed earlier? Right, you're literally in space. How can we encourage um, the user to be stationary here? This is actually another really good example of how we interpret our surroundings. In this example, the cockpit itself is the point of reference and acts as a foundation to the motion the person feels outside of the spaceship. The cockpit also plays as a secondary role of lessening the intensity of the person's optic flow. The cage-like container behaves almost like blinders that limits the exposure of motion, as well as providing uh, the illusion of still feeling stationary relative to the cockpit. So in a sense, you're not moving, it's space that's moving around you and your um, spaceship. The last lesson I want to share, and I personally feel is the most important one to learn, is um, that everyone is different. Um, yeah, I know, this, this is super cliche, but it's also very true when it comes to VR. We as human beings are super complex in nature. All of us are biased from the way we grew up, um, our cultural differences, gender, age, body structure, the list goes on and on. And all of this will affect how you experience VR. Some people are simply susceptible to certain types of motion and experiences that will always make you uncomfortable, no matter what, no matter what you design. And some people can build up a tolerance to certain kinds of experiences over time, and others just never had a problem to begin with. 
You just need to remember that we can craft these experiences that we need to keep a conscientious mind about who will be able to enjoy your experience. Because just like not everyone is willing to jump out of a plane, the way you craft your experience not only um, determines if a person will like it or not, but whether they can physically and mentally tolerate it as well. So just to recap, um, these, are, uh, these are the important lessons I, uh, I wanted to share again for designing for VR. That conflict causes chaos, that perception is interpretation, we can encourage these uh, interpretation and that everyone is different. And just to reiterate my first question again about what, um, what does science have to do with design, hopefully this presentation has shown that we as human beings have set guidelines from both a biological and uh, psychological perspective. Creating experiences that harmoniously unite these two into something immersive and beautiful is part of the underlying foundation to designing in VR. Uh, thank you.